So Dr. Lee Waters, welcome to Ridley College. It's an honor to host you in our community. Um, you've come a long way from Melbourne, Australia, the University of Melbourne to be with us and uh, just so honored to have an opportunity to sit down and, and chat a little bit about positive education and about your journey and uh, what you're adding to the field. As you know, um, we started this journey at Ridley College about five years ago with a strategic vision around uh, inspiring, flourishing lives to transform our globe. Yes, I love that. Over the last uh, four years, we've really uh, Im improved and increased our fluency and understanding around positive psychology, the new field of positive psychology and positive education, mm -hmm. what that means for a learning community like Ridley. Yep. Uh, I'd love to know a little bit more about how you came to to be inspired by positive psychology? Oh, that's a really lovely question. Um, so for me, uh, I mean, my background is um, a psychologist for over 20 years, a university researcher at the University of Melbourne for over 20 years. Um, so professionally, obviously, an interest in the broader field of uh, psychology. Um, I trained before the field of positive psychology was a distinct field. Um, but coming into positive psychology was really an intersection of my professional life and my personal life. Mm. Uh, so I was very fortunate in that the field of positive psychology became a field around the time that I was pregnant with my first child. Mm. Um, I have a son, Nicholas, who's about to be 15. Mm. So we're, we're talking kind of 16 years ago. Um, the field was very new. It was about two years old at that point in time. And I was interested in how it was that we could apply psychology to help people thrive to help them be their best. Uh, typically, psychology in the way that I was trained Let's is... focus on the negative. Exactly, yeah. It's more of a kind of um, remediation process. How do we fix what's wrong with us? And so, more generally, I was interested in how do we use psychology to build up what's right with us, but that interest became um, much more refined when I was pregnant and I knew, okay, I'm about to have a child and I would really like to use my skills as a psychologist, not just to help this child when life is not so good mm -hmm. um, but but to also know how to be a psychologist to to help him make the most of life to help him bring out his strengths and his virtues and to really thrive so it was really an intersection of <clears throat> personal and professional um, and just one of those moments of synchronicity where I became interested in that as a mother at the time that the field first came forward so I started to read a lot about the field and um, really made a decision to reorient my research towards the field of positive psychology to, to scientifically understand and explore and therefore build the best of humanity mm -hmm. um, as a researcher, um, but also more particularly as a mother. Right, very good. Um, how exactly, and just to remind us, positive education, I mean, I <coughs> to summarize it mm -hmm. uh, for, for our viewers, um, uh, how, how, what, what are some of the general principles around how to inspire flourishing lives? Again, that's a really lovely question. So, I mean, broadly, the field of positive psychology is the scientific study of our strengths and virtues, mm -hmm. the scientific study of positive states, positive relationships, positive organizations, you know, like Ridley as a positive organization. Mm -hmm. And then positive education is a subfield. So it's the application of the principles and practices of positive psychology into an educational context. Um, for me personally, although my background, I have a PhD in organizational psychology, so um, the first 10 years of my life were, was very much in the sort of corporate world. Um, then again, becoming a mother, becoming interested in the schooling system and realizing that I think, and I know that you agree with me here, we've had lots of conversations about this over the last few years, is that if we um, can work with schools to introduce the principles and the practices of positive psychology to young people so that they are able to have a psychological toolkit at a young age to help them flourish and thrive, but also to develop resilience to cope with a life when it throws you slings and arrows. That this is um, part of helping those young people and part of um, doing our best to sway the current um, trends, unfortunately, in, in youth ill being. Youth ill being, but it's also part of helping in the long term to create societal change because. Um, the Ridley students who get this knowledge, who are equipped with these life skills, go on to be uh, leaders in our society. They go on to be strength-based doctors, strength-based yeah. lawyers, teachers, nurses, researchers, scientists. And so this for me is, it's definitely about equipping 
young people with the skills they need right now, but it's also a bigger piece of creating societal change. Yeah, fantastic. That's exactly, I mean, we talk about inspiring flourishing lives in our students, but, mm -hmm. but now it, that's evolved to, we recognize the bigger global picture of their ability to help transform and inspire flourishing lives in others. Exactly. You know, and the exponential yeah. effect that that's going to have. Mm -hmm. yep. um, so, so that's wonderful. Clearly, uh, in your career, in the last 16 years since you've found positive psychology and really uh, started to focus on it, you've been thriving. Um, you uh, uh, were the founding uh, uh, chair of the Center for Positive Psychology at the University of Melbourne in the, Un in the uh, Graduate School of Education. Um, just recently this summer, I was there when you were announced as the new president of the International Positive Psychology Association. Yes, that was a thrill. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, it's going to be a lot of work, but uh, <laughs> I know you're up for the challenge. Yeah. And then, uh, speaking of a lot of work, uh, you just recently <coughs> published your first book, uh, The Strength Switch. I did. Uh, speaking yeah. and, and talking about parenting with, with positive psychology and strengths-based yeah. parenting. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, so wonderful. Now. Your work with Ridley and with other schools uh, in Australia mm -hmm. is, is focused around a visible well-being. Yes. Um, and this is a, a particular sort of initiative and program that mm -hmm. is related to flourishing and positive education. Yep. Could you tell us a little bit about the yeah. principles that mm -hmm. underlie uh, visible well-being? Yeah. So what I'm doing with visible well-being is, um, it, for me, I feel like it's positive education 2.0. Mm -hmm. It's the way of evolving the field, um, working specifically with schools and finding a way to intersect the science of well-being with the science of teaching and learning so that every um, member of the community of Ridley, be they adult or child, has an opportunity to flourish and thrive. Uh, it's very um, evidence-based, but it's also very practical. We base it on the search framework, and the search framework looks at the six pathways that are pathways that lead to well-being. Um, and so search stands for strengths, emotional management, attention and awareness, relationships, coping, and ha habits and goals. And those six pathways came out of a very large uh, meta-analysis of over 18,400 peer-reviewed scientific journal articles um, over an 18,000, uh, sorry, an 18 year time period. Mm -hmm. So really looking at um, using the best of the science to help us be confident about what are the pathways that lead to wellbeing. And it turns out there are these six pathways which make this lovely acronym of SEARCH. Mm -hmm. And um, the, other, the other good news about those pathways is that they're all teachable. So we can learn about our strengths. We can learn to better know our strengths and use our strengths. We can learn about emotional management. We can learn skills that help us to pay attention. We can learn skills that help us to have better relationships, better coping and um, better habits and goals, which makes, which makes them ideal for a school um, because school, the core business of school is teaching and learning. And in the same way that we can teach math, we can teach geography, we can teach history, we can also teach well-being. Um, but I think what's distinctive about the visible well-being approach is that it's also an approach that's equally applied to adults in the school mm -hmm. and so that everyone has the opportunity to use the search pathways and to develop their own well-being as a result of being a member of the community of Ridley. Mm -hmm. Why do you think it's important or, or do you think it's important mm -hmm. that the adults in the learning community mm -hmm. are also flourishing? We're not just yep. simply delivering you know the search framework or yeah. well-being to students yep. but that it's essential that the adults in the learning community are also um, that there are examples that there's visible examples of their well-being yeah exactly and um, I mean again this is a little bit of a blend of my own professional journey in that I as I said my PhD was in organizational psychology so I started off really working with adults um, and running kind of employee well-being programs, team building programs, stress management programs, leadership programs. So all of my work was always with... In the corporate world. In the corporate yeah. world yeah. Um, and not for profit. So, but, and it was always with adults mm -hmm. until I came to the, these institutions called school where you have both adults and young people. Um, and the bulk of the positive education approaches that come into schools really focus on the students. Mm -hmm. And it's, a, it's, um, it's an approach where you deliver a curriculum mm -hmm. that teaches students about well-being. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not against that. I think that's a really good approach. But um, for me, what I found in working with schools is that when you do that, the um, adult members of the school are not getting the benefits of the learning. Mm -hmm. So you may be equipping young people with this kind of psychological toolkit, but you know what, guess what? <laughs> we need that too. 
Um, and how can we deliver it if we're not, you know, if the adults aren't uh, yeah. in a state of well-being? Absolutely. And, you know, the science so clearly shows that a powerful way of learning for a young person are the role models around them. Sure. And, you know, you have that sort of very heartbreaking scenario of a teacher who is teaching a curriculum about well-being but is not demonstrating the principles themselves because they're under pressure and they're under duress. And I mean, one of the, the reasons why I chose to work with Ridley was your commitment to saying this is about whole school wellbeing mm -hmm. um, and it's about every member of the community ha having the opportunity to thrive by going through this training process and learning the skill sets around the search framework so that the students aren't just learning about wellbeing, but they're just seeing it modelled everywhere. Mm -hmm. And in the moment, you know, in that moment of stress or duress that a teacher or a student is experienced, that's, that's the real-time learning that occurs. You know, and the basic principle of visible wellbeing is taking something that um, is invisible, mm -hmm. and that is our wellbeing. Everyone has wellbeing. It's an internal phenomenon. So you have wellbeing, I have wellbeing, the class has wellbeing, the staff and faculty have wellbeing. How do you take something that's internal um, and make it, or invisible, and make it more visible? visible. To, to yourself so that you've got a better read of your own well-being, um, but also for others so that a teacher can walk into a classroom and get a read of the well-being of the class or an individual student and have that real-time moment of support or intervention. And alternatively, and this is a big one I think, is um, not just being able to see when well-being has dropped and is in need of help, but also being able to more visibly and more clearly see when well-being is going well because what the research shows us is these are the moments that we capitalise on. When you have those days, those months, those years, those minutes of high well-being, this is when you have the opportunity to really start accruing your psychological resources, your social resources, and get yourself to that point of thriving. Mm. Excellent. Rid Ridley's been on a journey, as I said, for four years. We've really uh, improved our understanding and, and, uh, and literacy around positive education, positive mm -hmm. psychology. Um, we've defined flourishing uh, by the acronym PERMA-V, yeah. uh, and many of our viewers would be familiar with that. They've heard me talk about that before. Uh, we've adopted it from the work out of uh, University of Pennsylvania, yes. and, uh, sort of the godfather of positive psychology, yep, Dr. Right. Martin Seligman. Mm -hmm. How, um, and educators love acronyms. They do. <laughs> but e explain to me um, how visible well-being mm -hmm. relates to or contributes to or complements yeah. Mm -hmm. Great question. And um, so this was obviously an intellectual question that I also um, explored myself in terms of with my hat as a researcher on, um, but also in terms of my on the ground consulting work with schools. And when um, Professor Seligman first put forward the idea of PERMA, he, you know, his, his sort of theory and his argument was that um, well-being is multidimensional. And so in order to have high levels of well-being, we need to have aspects of PERMA-V. So we need to have more positive emotions than negative emotions, that's the P. We need to have more engagement, more relationships, more meaning, more accomplishment, more vitality. So that's what we're aiming to achieve. That is a high state of well-being. And the question that I had, I guess, as a researcher, but also in working with, um, I've worked with schools all across the world, and um, I love working with schools. Schools, are, schools have that great blend of the intellectual curiosity, but then also the really practical Okay, so we, we intellectually, yeah, yeah, we understand PERMA, but how do we get there? Yeah. And this is where the research behind the search framework came forward, was really in me engaging with a lot of schools and um, school leaders like yourself and teachers kind of saying, okay, but how, this is, this is what we're aspiring to, how do we get there? Yeah. And so visible wellbeing is really about the pathway towards PERMA. How do we get to PERMA? We take something that's an invisible phenomenon, we make it more visible to ourselves, so that we can build up on high well-being, we can intervene when well-being is low, we see well-being and then we build it through these six pathways that get us to a state of well-being. So I see PERMA-V as the, the outcome, what we're aspiring to, and I see visible well-being as the pathways and the process that get us there. We're so excited to be uh, in this, on this journey with you and yeah, just at the outset. Yeah, me too. Yep. Um, uh, as a community, um, we, we, we've always asked ourselves, how do we, um, this is our goal, flourishing, perma -V, Yes. how do we do it intentionally? Mm. And, and we think visible well-being is, is, is one answer to that, uh, to that question. Yes. Um, 
So tell me, you know, why were you interested in working with Ridley? North America is a long, St. Catharines <laughs> is a long way away from Melbourne. It is uh, a long way. Um, you've been on a long journey, and uh, why are you interested in working with our community? Mm. Ridley is unique. Um, so there's a reason why I'm prepared to travel 30 plus <laughs> hours <laughs> to come and work with Ridley. Um, and it's unique in so many ways. Um, for me in particular, what made me feel that visible well-being will, will be a good fit for your school and not only that that you will do well by visible well-being in the sense that um, I know that the intention of Ridley is is truly and genuinely um, to make flourishing lives it's not just a statement that you have on um, a document you know, I, I, I've um, been, I've had a sort of relationship with Ridley now for 18 months. I know that it's got leadership support, obviously. Um, you've got a lot of really early adopters and passionate people across staff and faculty who really want to make this happen, both for the adults and for the children in the school. And we've also had conversations about extending that out to the parents as well. Um, the school has the right structure, it has the right people, it has the right ethos. Um, and, and for me also just a little bit of that intellectual curiosity because of the international nature of the school mm -hmm. to see how these concepts apply more internationally, more universally was um, something that I, I'm really curious about to see how that works. Um, and you know from an organisational psychology perspective it ticks all the kind of checklists of um, organizational readiness for change you know and what I love about our conversations and um, conversations I've had with faculty and staff here is that this is really genuine everyone really wants to see this succeed for themselves and for the students now but also for the future and this idea of having this service ethic that you know you are the first school in North America to be doing this and you very much embrace that we want to be a lighthouse school we want to be a leading school we want to do this right so that we can share our practice with other schools and, and help everyone on this journey of being the best version of themselves. Wonderful, yeah. No, we're very honored to be a, a foundational visible well-being school and, uh, and the first school in North America that you're working with. Uh, yep. So it's gonna be a wonderful, wonderful journey. And it's yes. gonna be impactful and yeah. uh, it will help us, um, again, be more intentional in achieving our vision. Yes. Inspiring, flourishing lives. So. It's going to make your vision more visible more visible. Yeah. <laughs> How do you like that? I love it. Thank you very much, Lee. It's and, been my uh, pleasure. It's, uh, it's going to be a wonderful two years. Thank you.